Hi, my name is Molly Crenshaw. I specialize in undergraduate instruction of human anatomy and physiology. Now before we examine what goes on inside the lungs, it's important to back up and to see how breathing movements associated with inhalation and exhalation actually enable us to oxygenate or deoxygenate the blood itself. We'll be examining what is known as Boyle's Law, associated with breathing as we would otherwise refer to as pulmonary ventilation. Pulmonary ventilation, or breathing, is induced by changes in the volume of the lungs and the air pressure within them. During normal inhalation, the diaphragm and external intercostal muscles contract and the ribcage elevates. As the volume of the lungs increases, air pressure in the lungs drops below atmospheric pressure and air rushes in. During normal exhalation, the muscles relax, the lungs become smaller, pressure inside them rises, and air is expelled. Boyle's Law explains this relationship between volume and air pressure. An increase in the volume of a container lowers the pressure of the air inside. A decrease in the volume raises pressure in the reduced space. The body's demand for more oxygen can change normal breathing to forced breathing. Additional muscles increase the changes in volume of the thoracic cavity so that more air can pass in and out more rapidly. This concept of an inverse relationship between your thoracic volume and thoracic pressure is, as you can see, what drives inhalation and exhalation. Now, it's important to review those muscles that we've discussed in earlier sections through anatomy and physiology. And you can review here those muscles associated with inhalation, as you can see, include the diaphragm, the external intercostals, the sternocleidomastoid, the scalenes group, pectoralis minor, and the serratus anterior, while those muscles associated with exhalation would include some duplicates, again the diaphragm and the external intercostals, but additionally internal intercostals, transversus thoracis, and your abdominal muscles. With those working together, you can facilitate pulmonary ventilation via the mechanism we've just learned as Boyle's Law. Let's return one more time to the bronchial tree and examine how air would flow through the many structures of the bronchial tree as you inhale and then exhale. Once again, you'll remember that the lower respiratory system begins with our cartilaginous trachea, bifurcating then into the two primary bronchi. And one thing you will notice here is that in the audio tab, I continue to use the word bronchi, which is plural, but here you will hear the word bronchus, primary bronchus, which is singular. Don't let the terminology confuse you. I need you to see the structural differences here between these many diverging bronchi, and so it's important to read through your book tab as we do so. You'll see here that like the trachea, the primary bronchi are composed of incomplete rings of hyaline cartilage. However, you will see that they are slightly more narrow than the trachea. As you see them branch into what are known as secondary bronchi, you see that these begin to get even smaller than the primary bronchi. And you'll see that here, instead of cartilaginous rings, as it says, the secondary bronchi are supported by irregular plates of hyaline cartilage. As they branch into the tertiary bronchi, you see that once again, these are smaller structures that begin with only a slight amount of supportive cartilage and then run into what are known as bronchioles, even smaller structures that, as it says right here, contain no cartilage at all. The significance of these structures is that as they continue to get even smaller, they divert air into what we will eventually see here in this image are known as alveoli. If you'll follow along in the illustration, you can pick up where we left off at these tiny non-cartilaginous bronchioles, which begin to continue dividing into what are seen here as alveolar ducts. The alveolar duct giving way to this cluster known as an alveolar sac, containing many individual sacs known as alveoli. Now these are two terms that are often confused by students. So in order to review these on your own time, I would recommend creating a note card so that you can see the significance of the two structures. We'll begin here by underlining the term alveolar sac and alveoli. 
and we'll create a text box that reminds us of the following. An alveolar set is composed of smaller individual alveoli. That way you can reference it later on in case you get confused. We'll save this note card, which we'll title Alveolar Sack. And we can review it later on. But for now, we're going to continue on with our discussion of these structures. The alveoli here are significant because as you can see in this enlarged image, this is where the many diverting capillaries, arterioles, and venules from your pulmonary arteries and pulmonary veins are actually going to wrap around the lungs. This forms something that we know as the respiratory membrane. This respiratory membrane is important for the exchange of gases between the blood and the alveoli. If we take a look at respiration, after we've looked at the muscles of exhalation, you can review using this video, which facilitates the process known as external respiration, taking place at the respiratory membrane. Inside the lungs, oxygen from the air is exchanged for waste carbon dioxide from the bloodstream. This process of external respiration takes place in hundreds of millions of microscopic sacs called alveoli. Oxygen from inhaled air diffuses from the alveoli into the pulmonary capillaries surrounding them and is pumped through the bloodstream. Carbon dioxide from oxygen-depleted blood diffuses from the capillaries into the alveoli and is expelled through exhalation. This is going to conclude our discussion of the lower respiratory system for today, but as you can see, we still have a multitude of material we need to cover in future class periods. In order to make sure you're prepared for this, there are a few ways that I would recommend that you study. To begin with, you can return back to the note cards that you would make through the system and review those. Here's our alveolar sac note card that we just made a second ago. Studying these can help you review concepts so that you can master them. Then to check your knowledge of material, you can take individual quizzes. It's going to be divided based on body system and, of course, by quiz type. You see that you can take a multiple choice quiz, which I would highly recommend doing first. And then once you've mastered your multiple choice quiz, you can take a dissection quiz. where you begin to identify all the anatomy that we've just covered in this course. Best of luck to you as you study, and I look forward to continuing on with our discussion of the respiratory system in further lectures. I hope this has helped you see how to walk through use of the Visible Body Software program and how beneficial it can be both in class and during individual student study time. Thank you.